You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. So I was trying to think of an analogy of containers to WebAssembly when you told me this story about seven pounds of pastries. <laughs> That's just amazing, by the way. So, so like, is there, there, there has to be an analogy there. It's like this woman's containers and I'm going as WebAssembly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Kate told a story about how she went climbing with someone who brought seven pounds of pastries. And so I was trying to think of containers and WebAssembly. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you, Kate. You too, Alex. Kate Golden Ring of Fermion. And Kate's going to show us a demo of SpinCube. And SpinCube, it's an operator. It's a Kubernetes operator. And it really uh, empowers platform engineers to deploy Spin applications as a custom resource to their Kubernetes clusters. So that's just the description. Maybe you can tell us more about it and show it to us. Yeah, exactly. And I think starting with SpinCube, it's important to preface with what is Spin, because some people might mm -hmm. not even be there yet. But uh, Spin is a way of building serverless WebAssembly applications with a very declarative CLI, and it's also a runtime for executing those applications. So it lets you build those locally on your machine. And what SpinCube does is it lets you take that same application and then run it on Kubernetes clusters. So that's great for people who are here at Open Source Summit at ContainerCon and are wondering, how can I use WebAssembly on my Kubernetes cluster? And so um, you were reading what the spin operator is for SpinCube, but that's okay. just one. Well, that's just the operator. Yeah. Exactly. And, but that's the thing that users interface with. So that's the foremost layer of what SpinCube uh, is. Okay. But it's actually these four projects brought together by different companies to make SpinCube. And so those four projects are again, what are they? Yeah. So we have the spin operator, which right. is where you declaratively state this is my spin application and it's in the form of a custom resource. Yeah. And you apply that to your cluster. And then you have the container D shim which is actually the shim that runs on top of Containerd that lets you execute this WebAssembly application instead of a container on your Kubernetes cluster. And then you might think, okay, now I have to go install the shim on all of my nodes in my cluster. That sounds like a headache. Well, instead, you can use the Runtime Class Manager, which is, was made by folks from Liquid Re Reply, and it used to be called Kwasm, and that installs the shim for you. Uh, okay. And then to make it all easier, there's a plugin called the SpinCube plugin, that makes it all one simple spin cube scaffold experience. Okay. So why did you all create spin cube? Yeah, I think we originally, when people know about Fermion Cloud, they might know that we run a lot of WebAssembly applications on Nomad there. Um, but more and more people wanted to start running WebAssembly on Kubernetes. And actually, the container D shim was created by folks at Microsoft who wanted to run spin applications on AKS clusters. And so, Already, there was a clear desire for that, but the experience was a little hard, getting that shim onto your cluster, and then how do I update my spin applications to have it connect to different data sources, so a key value store or a Redis database, um, or Redis key value store or a SQLite database. Um, and so we brought together these projects out of that demand from users to have an open source project where everyone's collaborating on this smooth WebAssembly Kubernetes experience. So show me how you would use it or how a user might spin up SpinCube. Yeah, all the spins. All okay. the spins. So uh, right here I have a terminal um, and there's nothing in it. So we're just going to go ahead and get started with spin first. So spin has a few commands to get started. The first one is really simply spin new. So now I have all these templates where I can template out and build a spin application. Uh, let's go ahead and use JavaScript because there's more JavaScript developers out there than anyone else. And right. so we can template up a JavaScript application and we just pick a name for it. So we can say, hello, Open Source Summit. And an optional description. So my first spin up. And we can set a specific endpoint to trigger the application. So an HTTP request to the hello path uh -huh. of the endpoint will trigger our application. And now if we look, I now have a scaffolded application. So I can go into Hello Open Source Summit and let's see what has been scaffolded for us. So we have a classic JavaScript application and just a simple JavaScript file. Let's go ahead and see what's in there. And you'll see all it does is this receives an HTTP request and just responds 
with Hello from JS SDK. And so, you know, let's make this a little bit more topical. We can say Hello from Open Source Summit. And then we can do an npm install to install all of our JavaScript dependencies. And then our next spin command is a spin build. So what this is doing is this is taking my JavaScript application and compiling it into a WebAssembly bytecode artifact. So we have this universal WebAssembly component that we can now run on any operating system, any architecture, and we can actually deploy it to Kubernetes. Okay. So let's first run it locally to know how I would have my development loop. So we can do a spin up. And now it's serving on localhost 3000 on the hello endpoint. Right. And I can just curl localhost. 3000, hello, and hello from Open Source Summit. So that was a pretty quick experience to getting started with WebAssembly, and that's the whole goal of Spin. Mm. And so people enjoyed that experience, but they wanted that on Kubernetes. And so that's where we get to Spin Cube. So I actually am connected to an AKS cluster. And you can see here that it is a three node cluster. We have one control plane node and two user nodes. And I can go ahead and see that. Let's go ahead and see that we provisioned spin cube. So I kind of skipped over all the AKS control plane workloads. And you can see down here that we have three KWASM jobs that completed. And KWASM is another word for the runtime class manager. And what that did is it basically, for every node in our cluster, took our shim and put it on that node. So now that node can run spin applications. And then we have our spin operator there that's sitting there and listening for spin app custom resources. So our next step is I have to push my spin application to a container registry. Okay. So that then I can run it inside a pod in Kubernetes. So... I do a spin registry push and specify some container registry. I'm actually going to use ttl.sh. If folks haven't used it, um, ttl.sh is an ephemeral anonymous container storage registry. So anyone can push to it. Oh, so it becomes just something you can give a try, use yeah, to give a try for great something. Great for a dev experience. Right, okay. Um, and we'll say hello, open source summit, and just you can specify how many hours you want it to be live for. So let's uh. say five hours. So I'm pushing my WASM application in an OCI artifact form to a container registry. And that's because the OCI specification supports more than container types. It has other media types. And so now it's been pushed up, and now I can apply it to my cluster. And that's when we get to our spin cube plugin. So I can do a spin cube scaffold. And you just say from, and you pass the OCI image reference. And that is our custom resource we're going to apply to our cluster. So it's saying, I want you to execute this with the shim. Here's the image. And why don't you create two replicas of this? So this allows you then to just be very specific where WebAssembly is running. And then you're able to then just be able to use WebAssembly within that container environment then. Right, and so this can run alongside containers. You can actually have container sidecars to your WebAssembly application, or even have WebAssembly sidecars to your containers. So you don't need to create specific WASI node pools. You can run this right on the same nodes that you have your containers. Okay. Um, and then if we do, we can just go ahead and kubectl apply this. And now it's applied to our cluster, and if we do, get our pods, we'll see that they're about to run. And they're running. And let's go ahead and just port forward. And we'll, the, we automatically created Hello, Open Source Summit. And now we're once again serving on our port. And we can just do our same curl. And there we go. That same flow, but now it's on the Kubernetes cluster. And if we look at our resources, spin app, pod, deploy, this was all that our, our spin operator, our spin cube operator created. So we created that spin app custom resource. We told it two replicas, so it created two pods for us underneath a, de a deployment. And then it created a service for us to target it. And that was all done with a kubectl apply of that one 
spin up custom resource. So, so what's the bigger story here that you're telling people about this capability? So if you're trying out WebAssembly, what are some of the things you're seeing people do? What are some of the ways they're using SpinCube? Yeah, I think right now people are a little frustrated with the serverless story that exists and people are trying to write event-driven serverless applications on Kubernetes and it's not get, they're not getting enough reactiveness out of their applications that they want um, and SpinCube provides another way to do that. So a case study from that was the Zeiss group. Uh, they right. used to be on, uh, they were doing mainly containerized workloads within Azure and they decided, okay, let's see if I can change this to using SpinCube, what would my performance benefits be? And they did that, and it also enabled them to switch over to ARM-based nodes oh. because it's portable everywhere. And altogether, that led to 60% cost savings and the same amount of performance. Substantial. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because, oh, so they were like, you could see almost their mind working like, well, if we can get this to be as minimal as possible, and then we can run it on ARM, which is low power, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the performance per watt just yeah. changes quite a bit. And the great thing is they can change their mind and not have to rebuild anything. Say they want to go to back to X64, Wasm's completely portable, and they can even have node pools that are part ARM, part X64, um, and it really just works everywhere. And that's also great for time shifting, which is like one best practice for not only cost saving, but environmental benefits. If you know certain regions have better uh, resources for electricity, maybe you time shift your workloads there, but maybe they use different architectures. So I can't do that. Well, with WebAssembly, that's not a concern. I wrote a story recently about uh, these new data centers that we're gonna see emerge uh, that will just be hotter than we've ever seeing data centers get hot just because of the chips, the amount of energy that they're going to use and the amount of water that is going to be required. So this really is the future, this kind of stuff. Yeah. Is that being recognized? Um, I think so. I think there was, I can't remember who it was, and you might remember, someone did an analysis of the keywords at KubeCon. Did you see this tweet? No. I can't remember who it was, but the number one tweeted word oh, was WebAssembly at yeah. KubeCon North America. People are getting excited about all the different potentialities of this technology, um, whether that be in serverless or in other domains, such as plugins, embedded, et cetera. So what's next for SpinCube? So we um, announced at KubeCon North America that we submitted it to the CNCF as right. a sandbox project. So what's next is we want this to be open governance and we want more people to be involved because a lot of people are using Kubernetes. There's a lot of distributions out there and Spin's built to be pluggable. So we want people to add extensions to it and extend what they can do on Kubernetes with WebAssembly. Well, Kate, thank you so much for taking the time to show us SpinCube. This was great, Alex. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.